What's going on guys? It's your boy DPJ here today with another Destiny video. So yesterday we had the rise of Iron Stream and yes for damn sure it lived up to its expectation. I believe it had. We found out numerous new details from the expansion most of which I will cover in today's video as well as cover other things that came after the stream via Bungie and various other sources. Okay so Destiny The Rise of Iron is released on September 20th 2016. It releases for current gen only, that being PlayStation 4 and Xbox One only. If you are a PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360 player, this is what Bungie had to say regarding you and your consoles. From here on out, we'll be referring to the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 as the legacy consoles. If you're using a legacy console to play Destiny, you'll need to upgrade your hardware to experience the next adventure. Our goal is to always bring every player from this awesome community along for the ride as we continue the story of Destiny. At the same time, we will also continue to support players who elect not to upgrade their console hardware. This fall, you'll still be able to play Destiny on legacy consoles, but that journey will occur on a separate path. Up to this point, player progression between current and legacy consoles in the same family has been shared by each account. This summer, that experience will fork into parallel experiences that will no longer share progression. As the legacy generation guardians adapt to current platforms after August, there will be functionality in place to enable them to port their characters to a new console in the same family. In my opinion though, I feel that the rise of Iron being on current gen only, I believe it's a great thing moving forward as old gen did nothing but limit the content in which us current gen players could experience. I know that sounds a little selfish, but at the end of the day it's the truth. So yes, the rise of Iron is next gen only or current gen only. And the price of this expansion will be $30 and that's £25. So what do you get for your buck? Well, we ain't short on fresh new content, that's for damn sure. We get new story and plenty of new quests. We get a new raid. We get a new plague lands area and social space. Maximum light level increase, which I did mention on screen. They didn't say any specific number, but they did say it's going to be a significant increase. So hopefully we probably go up to about 400 or 450. Imagine that, that would be pretty epic. But then again, though, the difference between our significant and their significant seems to be about 15. But we're just going to have to wait and see on that. We also get new strikes and we also get some of the old strikes remastered to fit in with this new DLC. We get new PvP maps and game modes and much more. For pre-ordering the Rise of Iron expansion, you also get a special edition version of the Galahorn, which is called the Iron Galahorn. But do not fret. This isn't the only way you'll get a year free version of the Galahorn. If you don't pre-order it, the Galahorn can still be obtained via a quest. Just for the pre-order, you get a fancy skin for it. That's about it. It's going to be the same weapon though, so do not fret. But let's dive a little deeper into the DLC and the story behind it. So the wall which stood for centuries along the southern border of old Russia has collapsed. A battle scorched reminder that our enemies still seek to destroy us all. Fallen mutants now scavenge the tombs of the golden age and the plague they have unearthed in the wastes is more dangerous than even they understand. Join Lord Saladin, journey into the plague lands Learn the fate of the Iron Lords and stop the growing threat before it's too late. So in simple man's terms, within this DLC, we journey to become the new Iron Lords. So a little backstory on how this ties together with the Iron Lords of old. Before the city and the vanguards, there were the Iron Lords. Blessed by the Traveller's Light, these brave warriors dedicate themselves to defending humanity and rebuilding a lost civilization. From their mountain fortress on Foul Winter's Peak, Falwinter's Peak, I will add though, is where the journey in this DLC starts. It's an outpost which we need to reclaim. The Iron Lords range across the planet, battling the darkness and protecting the survivors of the Collapse. They did great things, but then they encountered an enemy they could not defeat. Now Lord Saladin, the last Iron Lord, honours the memories of his lost brothers and sisters. And he waits because he knows that someday the thing that destroyed the Iron Lords will return. This enemy which they uncovered and could not defeat was called Siva, which had been sealed away at the fate of the Iron Lords. So Siva, this plague, so to speak, a little more about it. Siva is a golden age breakthrough in self-assembling, self-replicating nanotechnology. So how has it come to resurface? Well, splices of the House of Devils. Splices, though, interestingly, are a part of all fallen houses. But this is the first time I believe we've actually seen them in-game. Splices are body hackers and bioengineers. 
These splices melt flesh and machine. The devil splices are loyal to the house of devils. Now the devil splices have broken through the walls, dug deep into the earth and found technology of almost limitless power. The area near the Cosmodrome where Siva had been quarantined for centuries. Now arm with Siva, the devil splices are becoming machine gods themselves. So we as guardians have to confront the fallen devil splices in the plague lands. And this is where the raid fits in. The raid sees us travel deep into the heart of the plague lands to find the source of Siva and contain the outbreak at any cost. If victorious in this new raid, you'll be rewarded weapons and armor forged from Siva itself. Sounds fucking epic to me. The plague lands though, where Siva lies at the heart of, is a new area to explore, with its very own patrols, public events, as well as hidden secrets to uncover. It's an area where the devil splices have used Siva to rebuild fortresses and have transformed this region to their own twisted desires. And that guys is basically the story behind this DLC and the info we got from the stream yesterday. We journey to become the new Iron Lords by stopping these mutant fallen of the House of Devils. We journey into the heart of the plague lands to stop once and for all Siva this plague. Now I have got a video coming from the things you may have missed from the stream yesterday so stay tuned for that. But guys I hope you did enjoy the video. Hope it cleared up a little few things of what some people are confused about. And I'll catch you guys on that next one. Peace out until next time. Peace! Always in the